Dad's family moved to Mitchum in 1948. Dad would tell us the suburb boomed after hearing he moved there. He attended St John's Primary School before moving on to Marceline College. He completed year 11 and left. Apparently he'd already learned everything and there was nothing left for them to teach him. These days it's called Google, but back in my day they called Kevin. After finishing school, he went and completed national service. He breezed through and was heard to mention, if those Nazis attack again, I'll sort them out myself. Well, lucky for them, they didn't attack. So Dad applied and landed a job in the bank with a sander, now known as the ANZ Bank, a lot quieter than the front line. He eventually worked his way up to branch manager. Dad was a pretty handy footballer in his day, playing in the seniors of Vermont at 16, alongside his brother Peter, before moving on to St Joe's Football Club in Spring Vale, excuse me. <clears throat> it was here at St Joe's that he discovered he had a stalker. Mum had spotted Dad at the Dandenong Town Hall a year earlier <laughs> and found out through a mutual friend that Dad was playing at St Joe's. She continued to stalk him each week at the football before finally getting the chance to meet him after a game when the footballers started to mingle with the netballers. They struck up a conversation and hit it off away, straight away. That was 64 years ago. Of course, Dad's recollection, recollection was a bit different. I told all the ladies to form an orderly queue and your mother just happened to be at the front. <laughs> they married one year later after a romantic proposal in the kitchen of Mum's parents' home and started a marriage that lasted 63 years. Like all good Catholics, they got busy. Six kids in eight years. One of them an absolute diamond, Dad would say. <laughs> Along with a big growing family comes responsibility. And Dad didn't shirk any of it. As well as his job in the bank, he took part-time jobs in car parks and a cleaning job in mines. He worked seven days a week and some nights as well. He never complained, it's just the way it was. Our childhood memories were of fun times. Mum and Dad had a bit of a far party here. Excuse me. Bit of a party house. Memories of mum and dad holding parties what seemed like every Friday and Saturday night. They'd invite friends and neighbours over. As kids, we were always included in these parties, along with our friends. I know many of my mates had their first tastes of alcohol at these parties. <laughs> Dad say it's safe to start the first one amongst friends. Birthdays and Christmases were always filled with lots of presents, big meals and lots of fun. Holidays were about loading up the Kingswood wagon with eight people and luggage and driving non-stop to Coonabarabran in New northern New South Wales in the middle of the summer with no air conditioning and for me facing backwards the whole way. 
but it was fun. Or Blair Gary Back Beach, with the new haircuts above the ears, no sunscreen, 40 degree days, spending the days saving each other in the ribs. <laughs> then the night times were tending the sunburn blisters on the back of the ears. It didn't matter though, it was always fun. Busy with his family and work, Dad always found a little bit of time to blow off steam with his mates from the bank. They'd catch up for a beer after work in the city and Dad would always jump on the last train home. Problem was, he'd fall asleep on the train and get woken up by the train conductor in the sidings at Lilydale. He'd have to ring Mum from Lilydale in the early hours of the morning who would have to jump out of bed and drive up to Lilydale to pick him up. Now this happened a few times and it was wearing thin with Mum. Dad loved to be with his mates and knew he just had to get from Flinders Street to Mitcham without falling asleep. He tried standing the whole way, pacing the carriage, but it was all to no avail. This particular night he jumped on the train, he struck up a conversation with the bloke next to him. He asked the bloke, where are you going to? The bloke said, Blackbird, two, steps before, two stops before Mitcham. Dad thought, perfect. Can you, if I fall asleep, can you wake me up when you get off? The bloke replied, yep, no problem. To Dad's horror, he's woken by the train conductor at Lilydale, shaking him, saying, Kev, you've done it again. <laughs> Dad got his bearings, looked around in the dark and thought, what happened to that bloke that was getting off at Blackbird? Only to see him sound asleep on his shoulder. <laughs> he ended up hitching a ride with that bloke's wife that night. Dad got the opportunity to start his own business in the city by taking over a car park. He finished up in the bank, left his part-time jobs, and started up in Lonsdale Street opposite the Queen Vic Hospital. It was a fantastic opportunity for Dad as it gave him financial freedom, but also provided his brothers, nephews, and sons with full-time and part-time work. It also gave him the opportunity to buy a beach house. And after looking around a few different locations, they decided on Sandy Park, <coughs> purchasing, purchasing a house there in 1983. This was to become their retirement home some 20 years later, but also provided lots of fun times for everyone who visited or stayed. Dad jumped straight into the community at Sandy Point. He joined the Foster Golf Club, became involved in the church, and volunteered for the Fish Creek Fire Brigade. He loved this role. He went on to complete numerous courses and became a life member after 20 years of service. He loved getting the call, rushing to the base at Sandy Point, getting suited up, and turning the lights and bells on the fire truck and racing to a fire or an accident. Unfortunately, it wasn't all smooth sailing. He recalled the story where he got called out to a single motorbike collision not far from Fish Creek. After arriving, he saw the bike, but it took him a little time to find the rider, who had been thrown some 20 metres away in a ditch. He was moaning in pain as Dad stood over him. In the long grass, he could see the bloke's head and shoulders, but couldn't quite make out the rest of his body in the scrub. Dad was trying to calm him down until the ambulance arrived, but he was in a lot of pain, continually screaming at Dad. This went on for a good minute before Dad decided he'd kneel down to see if he could understand what he was saying. He kicked the log away from which he was standing on, only to learn it was the bloke's broken leg. <laughs> he quieted down a bit after that. He attended many fires and incidents with the CFA. It suited Dad. He had a theory in life. If you want to be happy, give without expecting in return. And that was Dad, always helping. Never putting his hand out for anything. The CFA in church roles really suited his nature. Dad loved his grandkids. He loved having them at Sandy Point. And he terrorised every single one of them. <laughs> his favourite trick that none of them avoided was Dad pulling out his false teeth and putting it in, the, in their mouths. It caused sheer horror for the young ones, but they always came back for more. He only succeeded once with actually putting one in their mouths. Poor Joanne had frozen, in fear, jaw on the ground. I think it surprised Dad more than Joe. Jackie wrote a moving letter to Dad. She noted in it, she loved the way he would always push the envelope and then would pull out her thong and thong him. Dad would freeze once he'd been thonged. And once Nan turned away, he'd give the kids the finger. <laughs> he was always looking for a laugh. For those who have had the fortune or misfortune 
I've been invited home by Dad for a barbecue. We'll be familiar with his barbecue cooking skills, or lack of them. His place became commonly known as the Sandy Point Crematorium. He only cooked meat one way. He'd, as high as it possibly could go, cook one side for five minutes and turn it over for another five minutes and then leave it on for a bit longer to make sure it's cooked. <laughs> Didn't matter what sort of meat it was, you have a little bit of uh, rissole that's going on with your steak and your chop and whatever else was in there. It didn't matter what it was, it was coming out of charcoal. He would ask relatively new guests how they'd like their meat cooked, but it wouldn't matter what their reply was, you can only have charcoal one way. It wasn't unusual for people rolling up at dinner time for a feed. Mum wouldn't even know, Dad just invited people for dinner. I remember a well-to-do couple rolling up with some Wagyu Eye Philip and a couple of bottles of fancy wine. This back in the day when Wagyu wasn't even a thing. Dad grabbed the meat along with the snags and rissoles and headed outside to start the barbecue. The older chap in his posh accent told us how he had intercepted the steak before it was vacuum sealed and sent to Japan as only took the best of our Aussie steaks. I then heard Dad yell out from the barbecue, how would you like your steak, Winston? I've never seen them again. <laughs> Dad was also committed to the church. He wouldn't miss a Sunday mass, served as a special minister and helped out wherever he could. At one point, he would have the parish priest over for dinner once a week and would have him lie on the floor as mum and dad would walk on his back because the priest apparently had a sore back. Surely big points there to get into heaven, Dad. But the church was good for Dad as much as Dad was good for the church. It again suited his giving nature. In 2002, Mum and Dad moved out of the Big Smoke and settled in Sandy Point for good. Dad started a business called Prom Protector. This involved, involved providing security for houses who had owners in Melbourne. For a small fee, he would check the houses morning and night to make sure all was good. He built it up into a good little business, but of course, Dad being Dad, it quickly expanded to lawn mowing, house cleaning, window washing, gardening, tip runs, snake catching, wildlife removal, putting out and taking in of bins, and walking on backs. And any other general inquiry that any of his customers would ask for. Dad just couldn't say no. If you're a Swan supporter, chances were you got a discount as well. So Dad's two greatest loves in life were Mum and South Melbourne or the Sydney Swans Footy Club but not in that particular order. He never misses their games and would talk to anyone in earshot about the Swannies. Bobby Skilton was his favourite, followed by Paul Kelly. He loved being at the 2005 Grand Final when the Swans broke through after 72 years. He loved being in Sydney to witness Tony Lockett breaking the goal kicking record. His favourite memory from the 2005 Grand Final was Leo Barry's mark in the dying seconds. He reckons it should have been mark of the century. Even years on, when a mark of the day is shown, he would always comment, nowhere near as good as Leo's mark. He just loved the Swannies. Even on his sick bed, he would always want to know, how's the Swannies going, or did the Swans win? It's only fitting today that he's sent off with the Swans theme song. Finally, the family would like to thank everyone who's taken their time to help with today's setup. Also, all you people today, especially those who have travelled a long way, to help celebrate Dad's life. In particular, we'd like to thank the palliative care nurses, the district nurses, Dr. Royu, and the foster hospital nurses and staff who did an amazing job with Dad in his final days. Um, also our sisters, Terry and Becky, who nursed him in his last couple of days. Um, and a special thank you to the Fish Creek Fire Brigade for coming today and forming a guard of honour for Dad. We appreciate it. He was a good man. <clears throat> Thanks, Tim. Always a hard act to follow, you bugger. Um, I, I, for, for the people here that don't know me, I'm Kevin's son-in-law, one of his son-in-laws. And I've been asked to say a few words today on behalf of um, his granddaughters, Joanne and Jackie, 
And I'll start with Joanne's words first. Um, and she'd like to start with a poem. God's garden. God looked around his garden and found an empty place. He looked, he looked down upon the earth and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and lifted you to rest. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He knew that you were suffering. He knew you were in pain. He knew that you would never get well on earth again. He saw the road was getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyelids and whispered, peace be thine. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone, for part of us went with you the, the day God called you home. Grandpa was the most generous and kind man we all knew, but he was also very cheeky and our lover, lover, lovable larrikin. My fondest memories of Grandpa, Grandpa all centred around him being mischievous. And uh, this is a common theme here, like when he used his face, his false teeth, the chases all around. I remember him once chasing me through the lounge room with his teeth and he accidentally put them in my mouth and I vomited all over the carpet at Sandy Point. And, and again, he was in big trouble with man and made him clean up the mess. So many stories can be told of our grandpa, but he was simply the best. His death will leave a big hole in our family and our hearts. We love you so much, grandpa, and we will miss you dearly. That was from Joanne, and uh, these words are from Jackie. Today we say our earthly goodbyes to one of the most incredible men I have ever met in my entire life. My family is grieving the loss of my grandfather. We feel the empty void clearly. The head of the family is no longer here with us, and we feel his absence sharply. But we know that he is no longer in pain and in a happy place looking down on all of us. We also know that it's just a temporary goodbye. We know we will see him again soon enough. We are counting on it. I wrote Grandpa a letter a couple of days ago. I process things and express my best wishes in writing, so this is my way of saying goodbye to him. I love you, Grandpa. Dear Grandpa, I can't believe I'm writing this letter to you. I guess I never thought about what it would be like to, when, you had, when you were no, no longer with us. You've always been such a key part of my life and such a steadfast and healthy part. I never let myself consider what it might be like once you are no longer with us. And now that you are no longer on earth with us anymore, I'm struggling to accept it. You and Nan have been a huge part and a very important part of my life so far. I feel incredibly blessed that you and Nan are my grandparents. I'm so thankful that you are my grandpa. I'm even more thankful that I was able to live so close to you and be able to do so many things with you and Nan throughout the years, creating that awesome relationship that we have. Not everyone gets that, but I did. When you were in hospital, I decided to make a list of memories of things that I love about you, and I don't want to forget a single thing. So, so many of my favourite memories have you in them, Grandpa. Chasing us grandkids around with your false teeth, the common theme. Our regular banter when Richmond played Sydney and your go-to would be, go Richo. Or when you would push Nan too far with your quirky jokes and she would take the thong off and threaten you. <laughs> As I flip through the pages of photos from every year of my life, you were there smiling back at me. You were always smiling, always laughing, always happy. That's how I will remember you. We are grieving the loss of you, a most amazing man, a devoted husband, a deeply loved and respected father and adored grandfather. The world seems a little less vibrant without you in it, Grandpa. But thankfully, this isn't the final goodbye. Someday I'll see your smiling face again and I'll, I will hear your big, deep laugh again and I'll feel your tight bear hug squeeze again. I know it. Until then, we'll wrap Nan, Nan in our arms and love and comfort you that you provided her in the 63 years you were married. We will continue to look at photos and remember the amazing times we had with you. We will talk to you and seek your guidance when we need it and look for you in nature when we miss you terribly. I will keep your memory alive and never ever forget you. You are the most important grandpa I could ever ask for. You loved Nan with your whole heart and cherished your kids, every one of them. You adored each of, each of the grandkids no matter how old we were or where we lived and what we were doing in our lives. You loved each of us unconditionally and without holding back. And boy, do we love you. We love you so much. Have fun playing golf in heaven, drinking your beer out of your sippy cup, and know that I'll be joining with my Richmond flag ready to watch Richmond beat Sydney once again when I get to heaven too. 
I love you so much and I will miss you every day. Until we meet again, Jackie. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mike O'Mara. I'm Secretary for Fish Creek Barbara. Kevin joined CFA in June uh, 89 as a member at Sandy Point uh, Fire Brigade as a volunteer. <coughs> in April 2002, subsequent to, uh, he joined Foster after Sandy Point and Fish Creek Brigades amalgamated. Um, in November 02, he moved back to Fish Creek and has been a member there since, uh, since then until his death. In Fish Creek, Kevin undertook an, a number of roles, including general firefighting, secretary, fourth lieutenant, and fire equipment officer or FEM officer. In 2019, Kevin withdrew from an operations role due to his health and he be became a support member. He continued to be a valued member of uh, the brigade. <coughs> Excuse me providing advice to, on fire alert issues around Sandy Point, given because he was doing uh, moving around, and using his knowledge to assist Jeff Grumley and myself, uh, who were looking after their fire extinguishers. In 2019, Kevin was presented with his 20-year service medal. He was a valued member of the brigade and very helpful to Sandy Point Brigade members. He personally mm -hmm. helped my transition from being a senior manager in headquarters to being in the real world as a volunteer. Uh, taking me out on the truck, driving lessons, spending time and talking to me about Sandy Point and about the issues we face there. He's always cheerful and willing to help and provide advice. He particularly loved to point out to my love of road bollards, uh, bollards as I was driving around the truck under his supervision. He figured I had a love affair with them because I kept trying to hit them. Um, he gave, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> gave uh, great service to CFA and his brigade and the members will miss him dearly. Thank you. So it's that place we have baptismal symbols which we are going to place on the front beam as we pray for Kevin and the good Lord may we see him in his eternal kingdom. In the waters of baptism, Kevin died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. At baptism, Kevin received a new garment and was asked to wear it spotlessly throughout his life. May the Lord not look on any wrong that he may have done during his life, but rather look upon his faithfulness to God and his love for his family and friends. In baptism, Kevin received the light of Christ. That light is guiding him throughout his life. 
May he now enjoy the risen life with his risen Lord. In life, having cherished the gospel of Christ, may Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. Amen. Let us pray and we will be saved. Listen kindly to our prayers, O oh Lord, as our faith in your Son raised from the dead is given, may our hope of resurrection for your departed servant Kevin also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, heard the voice from heaven say to me, Write down, happy are those who die in the Lord. Happy indeed, the Lord, the Spirit says. Now they can rest forever after their work, since their good deeds go with them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response today is, my soul is thirsting for the living God. I shall see him face to face. My soul is thirsting for the living God. When I shall see him face to face. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for the living God. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. When can I enter and see the face of God? These things will I remember as I pour out my soul. How would I lead the rejoicing crowd into the house of God amid, amid cries of gladness and thanksgiving? The throng wild with joy. The second reading is a reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord so that, alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God. As scripture says, By my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand to welcome the gospel. <laughs> alleluia, alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will not die forever. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels, then he will take his seat on his right, on his throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will 
He will separate men one from another as the shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come you whom my father has blessed. Take for your, for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you made me welcome. Naked and you clothed me. Sick and you visited me in prison and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will say, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you did this to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Next, he will say to those at his left hand, go away from me with your curse upon you. To the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you never gave me food. I was thirsty and never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger and you never made me welcome. Naked and you never clothed me. Sick and in prison and you never visited me. Then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked, sick or in prison and did not come to your help, then he will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me, and they will go away to eternal punishment and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. As we gather today, we celebrate the life of David. <coughs> I'm someone who believes in celebrating. He has graduated from this life. He has gone to a place where we will go also ourselves one day. So when we have something like this, this is not something we are going to, to run away from. Every person is going to find this day whether you like it or not, whether you talk about it or not, we are going to have a day like this, when we are going to say bye to friends and family. But before we reach there, we need to think about something. Life, when we celebrate a funeral, we pray for the person called by God, I was actually privileged to meet Kevin and to talk to him on phone. I'm the one who actually anointed him, the last rites. Something I learned from there, in his condition and situation, he still kept his faith. As we were praying, he was responding. And when I finish, he actually said, thank you, Father, for coming. What a blessing. 
I wish to have that also myself. I challenge people now. We pray for the person called by God. That's what we do at the funeral. That's number one. Number two, we pray for ourselves who are left behind. There's an African proverb I like saying, and I'm going to say it again today. It says, when a yellow leaf falls, it is a reminder to the green ones. When someone dies like this, it is also a reminder for us that our, our yellow day is going to come. We are going also to go down. <coughs> but before we do that, we write our stories. And I like and thank those three men who came and read the story and sharing some parts of Kevin's life. That was beautifully done. They tried to fix certain things, some with humor and four other things. Beautiful. Kevin wrote his story, but he's not the one who read it. The same with us. From day you are born to the day you are dying, you are writing your story. And mark this, you are not going to read your story. Someone is going to stand there and speak about you, about what you have been doing. That's one thing which I actually get scared of when I celebrate a funeral. All other parts are fine. But to say who is going to stand there and speak about me when I'm there. And the challenge is, you are on mute. I know that Kevin was given an opportunity or a chance to respond to what you have said. You could have said, don't say that in public. But he can't. He's on mute. He has done his part. He wrote his story. Now some people are able to stand and speak about him. I remember also, before I, I got ordained, I came here. That was 2017 or something like that. When I did my placement, I was in Leongata. Kevin was one of the parishioners. He loved this church. And the priest, our former priest, former parish priest, he wanted to be here today and he actually said, my apologies, I can't make it there having a meeting. He wanted to come. What a blessing to hear of someone, people who journey with you in your faith wanting to be present at your last day. So as we look at our readings today, let us also think of who we are. We are born with nothing. We live accumulating things. And we die with nothing. Some of us, we forget to remain on the level of accumulating. That's why I challenge people to say, come to church, or at least you can come on your own. Not coming to church when you are in the coffin. The doors of the church are open for everyone. God is open for everyone. And you are challenged to say, your relationship with God matters. Think about this. Because at the end of the day, nothing earthly is permanent. Every earthly thing has got an expiry date. Even your life has an expiry date. One day, it's going to end. So it's a challenge to say, as we journey through life, what do we want? Do we think we are immortal? Not at all. You will die one day. Think about your relationship. 
I was asking myself the other day to say, imagine God give you the summary of your life for how many days of your life are remaining. Let's say it gives you two weeks or, or maybe two years or some maybe 20. The moment you know that you are only remaining with this number of days, I'm telling you, you start living with a different mindset and attitude. You start living to celebrate your life. Sometimes we waste time fighting, not talking to each other, not doing all sorts of things. All those things are not necessary. Love one another, support one another, forgive each other. As long as you are human, sometimes you make wrong choices. Sometimes you make mistakes. Sometimes you offend other people. Sometimes you offend even God. But you are not defined by that. Just go and say sorry. You see some people not talking to their parents. They delete their parents in their memory to say, I will never talk to my parents again. That's a waste of time. Forgive each other. Start living happily and enjoy life. Life is too short. That's what we need to see. We, will, we are celebrating Easter. Starting from Easter Sunday up to Pentecost, we are still celebrating Easter, a life of the risen Lord. He died for you and for me. He died for everyone to have salvation. So like Kevin, he had his faith up to the point of death. He never rejected his Lord and he believed in what he believed. It is also a challenge to all of us. As we celebrate the life of Kevin, I don't want to talk about much about the judgment which we heard in the Gospel of Matthew, when there will be separation of sheep and goats. That one is not mine. The judgment is for the Lord. But the challenge is, know that the day like this will come for you and for me. When it comes, am I ready to go? Death is like relay. The stick is with heaven today, is giving it to someone. Maybe it's me, maybe it's you. If it's me, am I ready? If it's you, are you ready to take the stick? May God continue to bless you and to protect you as you reflect about your life. Live a life of celebrating. Live a life of forgiving others. Live a life of knowing who you are and what you are doing in your life as you write your own story in life. May we please stand. Jesus Christ is risen, the firstborn of the dead, with confidence in the salvation he brings. We now confidently offer our prayers. For Kevin, a child of God and heir to the kingdom, that he may be held securely in God's loving embrace now and for all eternity. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That God, in his mercy, may blot out all Kevin's offences, establish him in light and peace, and call him to happiness in the company of all the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will receive our praise and thanksgiving for the life of Kevin. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Kevin received the light of Christ. Let us pray that God will now scatter the darkness and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer.
to the procession. Sisters, that by sacrifice and those may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father.
look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that you, your, your departed servant, your departed servant Kevin, may be taken up into glory with your son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so with company of angels we praise you and with joy we proclaim Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heavenly days are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. May we be seated for me. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and speak of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Gregory Charles Bennett our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember your servant Kevin, whom you have called from this life to yourself, grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed apostles and all, all, the, all the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. 
We may hate to be called his to eternal life and may pray to glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. In the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, may we be said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who we'll say to our apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant you peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May we peace sit on the earth. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that we should enter the Lord, but when you say the word, my soul shall be. So, for the receiving of the Holy Communion, those who are Catholics and who receive may come and receive. But if you are not Catholic and you just want to come for a blessing, you come and you cross your hands like this to get a blessing.
Let us pray. Can we please stand? Grant we pray, Almighty God, that the same at heaven for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament may pass over to a great place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen.
trusting in God. We have prayed together for Kevin. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Kevin again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will dispense in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. In baptism, Kevin shared in the death and resurrection of Christ. May he, will, may he be welcomed into the glory of eternal life. There's a sign of respect for Kevin. We let this incense rise to God who, who called him to share in his glory. Saints of God, come to this day, come to meet you, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Give him eternal rest, O oh Lord, and may your light shine on him forever. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend Kevin into the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Kevin during his life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to Kevin and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with Kevin forever. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother Kevin to the place of rest. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank <laughs> you. 